quest'anno abbiamo il più grande numero di guidatori che abbia mai partecipato in questa storica corsa. Come al solito, guidatori da tutte le parti del mondo sono già sotto scritti. Ma la sorpresa più grande sarà l'entrata della giovane guidatrice americana, la Poveda Piazza. Come al solito, this great classic. The motors are spinning around the track in a reckless fashion. It's rather difficult to tell definitely who is leading at the moment. The drivers are continually passing and repassing each other. However, I shall have the official positions for you shortly. The big surprise of the race, however, is the, uh, the, uh, Blonde Comet. She's that American driver, you know. He's driving almost as well as the men. In fact, at the last checkup, I believe she was fourth. Or was it fifth? Well, no matter. The race is still being run. is bowling along at a tremendous speed. He's still in 12th place.
Did you call me? Bring me a half-inch socket wrench, will you? Half-inch socket wrench. Coming right up. Hey, you know something? That blonde Comet, boy, if she's as good as she looks, there's going to be some spin-dizzy drivers around here this time next week. Oh, she isn't that good. Yeah? Well, she's good enough to drive in them foreign races. Yeah, but she wasn't good enough to win any of them. Yeah, well, just the same. If you ask me... I didn't ask you. All right, she got to be in this racket anyway. It's no game for a woman. It's tough enough for a man. If I was her old man, I'd spank her good. Yeah. Well, he'd have to catch her first. And boy, oh, boy, you're going to have to do the same thing when she gets on that track. Well, she better <laughs> keep out of my way, that's all. Oh, boy, I wish she'd get in my way. Car or no car. What a sweetheart. Come on, come on. Keep your mind on the race. Here, tighten up those nuts. Sweet. Getting along okay. Doc says he's got better than an even chance now. How did he look? Pretty terrible. He is white as a ghost before the transfusion. I was white as a ghost after. <laughs> <laughs> how much blood did you give it? I don't know. When I woke up, it was all over. Well, then how do you feel? I feel a little wobbly in the legs. Doc wanted me to stay around and rest a while, but I told him I got a lot of work to do on my car before the race. So I better get to work and get this thing straightened up. That's a laugh. What's a laugh? A sweet like Jensen with a couple of quarts of old southern blood in him. <laughs> yeah, it'd be funny if he came out of the hospital with a Texas drawl. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Oh, uh, Swede wished us both good luck in the race. Said he's sorry he wouldn't be in there throwing dust in her eyes. Look, Texas, you don't think you have a chance in that hunk of iron, do you? Well, it's have to fall apart in the first ten laps and put you where Swede is, or maybe worse. Why don't you get smart and forget it before it's too late? What's the matter? You afraid I'm going to beat you? No, no, not with that meat grinder. I wouldn't be too sure about that. I hit 111 up at Muroc the other day. I'm almost a sense to qualify. And if you don't, it'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. Why do you say that? Well, look, you haven't had any experience. It's your first race, isn't it? Yeah. You'll find it's plenty dangerous, even for men who've been in it for years. It's a lot different from riding bucking Broncos, you know. Now you're talking like my old man. He used to say, take a cowboy off his horse, he's a pretty helpless galoot. Then he never was far enough out of the state to kick the Texas mud off his boots. Just the same, he must have been a pretty smart old man. Yeah, he was. But I'm going to prove he was wrong about that helpless galoot business. Well, see, I can't argue out of risking your neck, so good luck, kid, but be careful. Thanks. And if there's anything I can do to help you with that, uh, that. Just give me a yell. OK, Jim. Clear two miles, nothing ahead of you. Go to it. How much further is it to Los Angeles, Miss Beverly? We're in Los Angeles now, Jenny. We passed the city limit sign four hours ago. Oh. Well, looks like we go over the hill. How do you like that? Nothing like having your own private racetrack. All the nerve.
How did she go? Pretty good. I didn't have her all the way down, though. I think I'll try her again. Okay, let's go. Didn't you see that sign? Yes, I saw it. What of it? Well, what are you doing in here? This is a public highway, isn't it? Yes. Well, that's what I'm using it for. Well, I should think you'd have more brains than to be coming... Oh. Now, if you will be good enough to move that yard dog out of the way, I'd like to get going. Pleasure of seeing you again at Ascot. Do you think you'll qualify? Why, I'll run you out of gas, sister. Oh, you will have a lot of dust in your eye. Gee, the blonde comet. Boy, what a sweetheart. What are you looking at? The, the, the queen's tent. Boy, did you get a load of that mate of hers? What a sweetheart. Come on, snap out of it. Give me a screwdriver. Yeah, screwdriver. Yeah, yeah. Get me a bottle of pop, will you, Jenny? Sure, Miss Beverly. Hot, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. How about that screwdriver? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is hot, isn't it? How about a cold drink? I said, how about a cold drink? Okay, give me a bottle of pop. Come on, right up. Hot, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Two ice-cold drinks, please. Make it four, buddy. Come on, a little service. What did you say? Uh, four bottles of pop, please. Okay. <clears throat> My name's Curly. Curly Watson. Curly? Oh, well, when I was a kid, I had curls down to here. The name stuck, but the, the hair didn't. Oh. <laughs> What's your name, Toots? Yenny. Yenny? No, not Yenny. Yenny. Yenny Jorgensen is Swedish, you know. Oh, Jenny Jorgensen. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Jenny Jorgensen. Uh, uh, 
Tu talar du svenska? Ja, naturligtvis. Hela min familj är svenska. Jag var född i Sverige. Jag är den enda som kan tala engelska. Tror du jag talar gott engelska? Jag tänker mycket bra om deras land här. De skulle vara riktigt tacksam. Jag ska sända till familjen. Thank you very much, Mr. Curley. Oh, that's all right, Toots. Hey, uh, what are you doing after the race? Huh? I say, what are you doing after the race? Oh, uh, well, here's your uh, drinks. Thanks. I met you the day before yesterday on the road, remember? Oh, yeah. I'm with Jimmy Flynn, car number 75. <laughs> Boy, did you burn him up. <laughs> Was he mad? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, I guess I better be going. Uh, so long, Toots. So long, Miss Comet. Uh, uh, Beverly. I told you I'd pay you, didn't I? Yes, you told me that two or three months ago, but I haven't been tempting yet. All right, you'll get it. I'd better, or you won't get any more tires, or anything else for that matter. Oh, you're going to get tough, eh? Yes, with a mug like you. I don't see what you're doing in this race anyway. If I was on the commission, I'd have ruled you off a long ago. You're a disgrace to the game. You're no good, you're a dirty chiseler, and a liar, and your dirty driving is a menace to everyone else in the race. Where I come from, Mr. Vim's fighting worse. Why don't you mind your own business? If you were a young guy, why I... Don't give me that. Don't let my age stop you. Anytime you want to start anything, go ahead. Oh. And you're yellow, too, on top of that. Boy, that's telling him, Barney. Well, it had it coming. Did you qualify, son? Yes, sir. Good. Say, uh, I need a couple of new plugs. Well, they're right in the bottom right-hand door there. Help yourself. Thank you. Say, Tex. I don't like the looks of those two rear tires of yours. You better put on some new rubber. Can't afford it. Well, they're, they're shot and dangerous. You don't want to break your neck, do you? No, but they'll have to do. Say, young fella, take two of those new tires there and put them on. I'd rather lose the price of two new tires than see you lose your life. That's mighty nice of you, Barney. Thanks. Oh, forget it. How's the new carburetor, Jim? Fine, Barney. Cuts my gas consumption about 40 percent. Well, don't cut down the speed, too, does it, Jim? No, not at all. Well, you know, I got a good pal in Washington who's in on the defense setup. If you like, I'll put a plug in for you. You know, Uncle Sam is going to need a lot of carburetors, and the less gas they use, the better. That'll be great, Barney. Well, can't promise anything, but uh, nothing like trying. You know, the old guy with the whiskers, if you got, if you, if you got something he needs, why, well, he's a good customer. <laughs> Attention, all drivers. Assemble at starting line for final instructions. All drivers, please. That's off. Give my helmet, Jenny. Good luck, Jim. Thanks, Brian. Oh, Miss Beverly, your gloves. Thanks. Most of you men have driven this course here before and realize how tough it is. Today, this I track is tougher than ever because of the rain I last night. Place. It would be I'll dangerous to attempt a speed Are record here, though so I know many of you will Hello, try to add the winning points today to your former scores. But you do so at a tremendous Stewart. risk. Oh. Follow Curly the rules, we met all before. I ask is that you yes, twice. and follow Jim the line plan. with good sportsmanship. Good luck. How do you do? Hello. I reckon a lot of us are just going to be trailing you around today. I mean, that is, on the track. <laughs> I don't know. This is my first experience on a dirt track. You boys will probably drive rings around me. <laughs> Said she over modestly and not meaning a word of it. As is the custom on all tracks today, this race will be conducted under the rules and regulations of the three A's. Today's race, ladies and gentlemen, should be a real thriller. For here on this mile track are assembled some of the country's leading drivers. And the first time on any American track, a woman driver, the blonde Comet, who will attempt to match speed with veteran drivers whose races number in the hundreds. 
It takes a lot of nerve, but advanced information from abroad indicates this little lady knows all the answers when it comes to race driving. You can look for thrills and spills galore before this race is over, as it is next to the last tune-up race before the big track in Indianapolis. <laughs>
Stewart's going to get his someday. I'd like to see him try that on Jim. Jim would run him through the fence. Jim, at least you beat all the men. Nice work, Jim. Great test in the carburetor, Jim. Thanks very much. That's for Texas. You know, Jenny, I think I could learn to like that guy. Hello, Bernie. This is Jim Flynn. Say, uh, we're trying to get together enough money to ship poor old Texas body back home. How much can I put you down for? Yeah. Huh? Oh, we need 300 all told. Put me down for 25, Jim. Oh, that's all right. The least we can do for the poor kid. Yeah, I'll be over. Uh, thanks, Franny. Goodbye. 25 more. How much have we got now? Let's see, uh, 170.50 and 25, 195.50. Makes 200 even. Oh, thanks, Curly. Say, what's Charlie Howard's number? Do you know? I don't know, but I think you can get him at the Hollywood Garage. You know the number? 
Hollywood 1127. I'm Beverly Blake. Oh, yes. You drove a great race yesterday. <laughs> Thanks. You've driven a couple of great races yourself, according to my dad. He told me to be sure and look you up and give you his regards. Remember Cannonball Blake? I sure do. Is he your father? Well, unless my mother's been kidding me all these years, he is. Old Cannonball Blake. He, he drove some great races, too. I guess you must be a chip off the old block. How was he and where is he? He's fine. He's been in the tire business for the last 10 years. He puts out that Trojan tire. Is that so? Yes, that's why I'm racing. The big companies have all the good drivers signed up, so I'm doing what I can to get him some publicity. Well, I guess you're doing a good job of it, if uh, your last race was any example of it. I was just lucky. It takes more than luck to beat boys like Jimmy Finn, young lady. He's good. Yes, he is. Where's he from? Right here. He was born in Pomona. Used to be a grease monkey around my garage. He's got plenty up here. You know, he's got a new carburetor that we're going to make a lot of money out of someday. Oh, that's fine. Well, I guess he's a nice fellow, underneath all his gruffness, sometimes. What do you mean? Well, let him tell you all about it. Well, I must get along. It was so nice to meet you. <laughs> Give my best to old Cannonball, won't you? I certainly will. Oh, uh, by the way, I hear they're taking up a collection for that Texas boy. Yeah. Well, why leave me out? No one told me about it. Well, Jim's taking care of that. You can find him down to his garage on the corner of Ventura and Sunny Slope. Well, fine. I'll stop by. Well, here, take this along and give, give it to Jim from me. I'll be That'll glad. Sa save me a trip. I'll be glad to, Mr. Olsen. Well, goodbye. So long. Bye. Hi, boys. Hello, Charlie. Uh, here's 1250, Jim, from the boys at the Hollywood Garage. Uh, Thanks. Maybe stand now. 200, 212 mm, 250. Is everybody in? Yeah, just about. Gee, then we're shy uh, 87.50. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Well, that boosts us to 230. That's the best I can do. Take care of him, will you, Curly? Okay. Well, so long, Jim. So long, Charlie. Tell the boys thanks. Okay. Hello, Miss Comet. I mean, Miss uh, 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 Beverly. Hello. Hiya, Toots. Hello. Uh, fill her up and check the oil and give me some water. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks very much, Miss Blake. That's all right. It's a privilege. I know it's a little late, but I'd, uh, I'd like to congratulate you on the race. Thanks. I guess if you hadn't had to make that stop at the pit, it would have been a different story. Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, I guess that's it, Miss Beverly. What do I owe you? 180. Out of five. Are you going to the Oakland race? Sure, are you? That's where I'm headed for. Well, I'll be seeing you there, then. 
Here's my dust in your eye. Yeah, the same to you. <laughs> Two, five. So long. So long. So long, Miss Beverly. So long, Annie. Boy, what a sweetheart. You know, Curly, I think I could learn to like that gal. And today's race, like many of its predecessors here, is 500 times around the mile track. A distance of 500 miles to the winner, a net purse of $10,000 plus enough points to head for the big pond, Indianapolis. There are 33 starters here today, some new names and some old favorites. One of the added attractions is the beautiful and daring driver, the blonde Thomas, who last week set a new record in the Ascot race. Now it's about time for the cars to take position. The fastest qualifiers have been assigned positions nearest the pole car, which is the white coupe used by the officials. I take one more lap around the track and the cars will be all set. The pole car will drop out near the pits and the race will start. The blonde comet is just getting set close to the pole, and it's a matter of seconds. It's, it's, they're off! to change the ball of lightning.
Glenn finally got through it, and it looked as if he was going to cut Red's car in half. Red pulled in front of him again and again. That's bad driving, and the officials won't stand for it. But that's Red at his best. Bad, mean. The positions change a little. Comet first, Glenn second, and Stewart third. But putting the pressure on, don't take an eye off of this three-cornered battle. It's got the promise of being a test. second and the blonde comet third. The difference in laps between these drivers is small enough to allow one for either one of them. The other drivers in fourth, fifth, and sixth places have lost a lot of ground due to the, the time in the pits. I don't know what's in store for Red Stewart after the race, either from the officials or Jim Flynn. There's some pretty tough stuff tied by Red here today, and the crowd don't like it. Stewart make out. He didn't. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. Uh, 
Nice going, Groucho. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, uh... Oh, by the way, I believe this belongs to you. <laughs> <laughs> that makes us even. Yep. Looks like our little private feud's going to carry over to Indianapolis. You going to Indianapolis? Why, sure. This race gives me enough points to get in. Oh, by the way, Mr. Oldfield, Dad wired and said he'd meet me there. He said he'd hoped he'd see you. Well, I'll have to look him up this year. Will I be seeing you, too? Yes, yes. Uh, just take a good look at the first car that passes him. That'll be me. You hope? <laughs> <laughs> Down tight, down tight, boys. It was loose last time. Jim, I got word from that pal of mine in Washington. He said Indianapolis Race would cinch our new carburetor deal if you finish the money. Well, that's a big order, Bernie, but we'll be in there pitching anyway. Well, I'll see you tonight, Jim. Be sure to have that cup filled up with something besides beer. Okay, Bernie. So long, Jim. So long. Say, you're not uh, serious about entering the Indianapolis race, are you? Not serious? Of course I am. Why? Well, it's a pretty tough race. Too tough for a girl. It isn't like these tracks out here, you know. Besides, you'll be up against some crack drivers. You know, 500 miles is a terrible grind even for a man. Yes, I know all that. But I've got a job to do. Job? Yes. I thought you went into this racing business just for the fun of it. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. Look, did you ever hear of the Trojan Tire? No, can't say that I have. Well, neither of millions of other people. Well, it's my job to see that they do. My dad makes them, I use them, my racing advertises them. Savvy? Yeah? Well, I think your dad ought to have his head examined for letting you do it. You do, eh? Yes, I do. What kind of a guy is he, anyway? Well, for one thing, he was a better race driver than you will ever be. For another, he didn't want me to do it. It was my own idea. And now I'll thank you to mind your own business. Uh, did, did you find an address book? Uh... Hello, Barney, you old lead foot. <laughs> Why, hello, cannonball. <laughs> hello, Beverly. Hello, Barney. When did you get in? Just this morning. Sit down. Well, Barney, you haven't changed a bit, even to the famous old cigar. You know, I don't believe I ever saw him without it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't changed a whole lot yourself, except for that snow up there on your top of your dome. <laughs> well, I got that in the tire business. Well, you know, I was mixed up in the tire business myself for a while. Have something? Oh, no, thank you. I'll have a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee and uh, warm that up a bit while you're at it. You know, there's been a lot of changes around here since you and I hit those old bricks. That was a long time ago. 1919. 1916? That was before your time, young lady. Well, slightly. <laughs> that was the year that Sweet Borg and Art Barr got killed. Yeah, Chuck Briggs and Lou Sher rolled over three times without even getting a scratch. <laughs> that was the worst pileup I ever saw. I was clear across the track in sixth place when Sweet Borg, coming out of the far turn, started to skip. Wound up crossways the track. Chuck Briggs and Lou Sher were right behind. Too close to miss him. They all piled up. The track was fairly lit with wrecks. When it was all over, darn if Chuck Briggs and Lou Sherrill didn't pop out of their car like a couple of scared rabbits. Well, it was almost a miracle. Lou Sherrill told me later that in those few seconds, he thought of every mean thing he'd ever done to anybody. Well, that's all ancient history now, Barney. What are you doing now? Well, Jimmy Flynn and I have got a new carburetor we're trying to put over. How's it going? Well, he used it at uh, Ascot in Oakland, and it was OK. So. And if he makes good with it tomorrow, everything will be all set. We might even get some government orders. Well, that's swell. And it all depends on Jim tomorrow? Just about. Well, that's a long chance. It, it seems to me that you would have tried to get it in two or three of the other cars, just in case. We did, but nobody would go for it. Is it really good? Well, Jim says that's the only thing that beat you up at Oakland. Well, maybe I should protect myself tomorrow. What do you mean? Well, if I have one in my car, then we'll be even. Besides, you'll have two chances to prove it instead of one, won't you? All right, I think Jim would go for that. Uh, well, if you don't mind, let's leave him out of it. Let's keep this just between us. Oh, well, if you feel that way. I have two of them up in my room at the hotel. 
Fine, we can put them on this afternoon. It's a great, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Did I forget anything? I... How about the adjustment on the carburetor? Adjustment on the carburetor? Yes, I'm sure. I hope I... Oh, Barney, if I forgot. Did, 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 did I lock that pet truck in the... Did you lock that needle now, buddy? Oh, oh Barney, me... yeah. Barney, you're worrying me to death if that thing comes off. Oh, Barney. been an unusually quiet race. 250 miles have been completed. Positions are Bob Crandall first, Blonde Comet second, Ted Bell third, Jim Flynn fourth, Atkinson fifth, and the other cars are slowly moving into prominence. This has been a slow race up to now, and it's doubtful if the time for the distance will equal that of last year. But it's hard to tell at this time. Spill of the day. It's car number 13. It really took it that time. That's a tough spot. The upper right end turn. Car number 23 going into the pit. Looks like he blew a tire coming around the straightaway. prevailed around here today. That was Bob Crandall who crashed, the second crash of the day. After leading 50 laps, Crandall snapped an axle, tearing his wheel out of gear. It looks pretty tough. The cars are observing the danger signal and maintaining their position until the track is cleaned of all debris. That puts the blonde comet in the lead, and I noticed the speed has increased in the last 33 laps. Good night. 
90 miles have been run. It has been little greater than that of last year. It's amazing that the last 240 laps should have increased to a point that if it's maintained, the record can be set here today. There are 10 more laps to go. The positions are Ron Comet first by four laps, Dick Langdon second by three laps, Jim Flynn third by two laps, Ham Cooley fourth, and the rest of the field too far out to be accounted for. Darling, what's the trouble? I'm oh, glad it's too much. You can't go on. Never mind, dear, never mind. Get your friend. Quick, let him finish. My car. Go on, hurry. Take care of it, Jenny. Go on, Mr. Jim. Where's Jim? Right there. Hey, Jim, come here. Remember, he's all in. She wants you to finish the race in her car. Huh? Yeah, come on, come on. Comet's car coming out again. But she's out of the wheel. It looks like. Just a minute, I'll check up. It's Jim Flynn substituting for the blonde Comet. It's an unusual procedure to substitute a driver from an opposing car. I'll get the official track rolling before the race is over. Flynn is hitting up a good speed, trying to overtake Langdon, who's a half a lap ahead. The blonde Comet lost four and a half laps, and there's still four to go, and it's anybody's race. Signal the last time around, completion of the 500 miles. It'll be hard to tell. Come on, Jim, come on! I can't remember. In all my years of announcing here in Indianapolis, the race being so close, I don't even believe it. If it was such a thing as a photo finish, I wouldn't even believe that. <laughs> They batted the last lap, not even a length apart. One of them has got to go, and from here, I can't tell who. This is 
the proudest day of my life. It's the proudest day of my life. <laughs> and you know why? Well, sure, I know why. All right, I'll tell you why. Do you realize that four Trojan tires went the whole 500 miles in Indianapolis today and finished in first place? Finish in first place, Barney. <laughs> sure, but those tires that had a tough time doing it hadn't been for Jim's carburetor. And uh, don't forget that. Well, I'm not forgetting that. And I told Jim, I went to Jim and I told him, I said, listen, Jim, didn't I tell you, Jim? Hey, where are those kids? Hey, Jim! Hey, Beverly! Hey, where'd Jim and Beverly go? Jim, Dad, why? Hadn't we better go? I'm not going to let you leave here until you promise that today's race was your last, even if I have to keep you here until, well, until snow falls. But I can't do that. Why not? It's my job. No, it isn't. It's a man's job. From now on, the man of the family will take care of it. Is that so? Well, let me tell you that... Hey, wait a minute. Are you proposing to me? Say that again. You heard me. Well, of all the silly kids... <laughs> Thank you, Miss Lake. Me too. You're welcome. <laughs>